besties! Thanks for joining us again for a watercolor tutorial. This week we're going to be doing a bumblebee. I've got a little sheet here so you can see the different steps and I'll be providing that on my website so find the link down in the description. And we're going to be doing the bumblebee in a larger format so I'm going to be showing you that very soon here. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk art supplies. First, you'll need a water brush, a fine tip one. I'll have links in the description for all the different supplies. They will be affiliate links for Amazon. So you'll be paying the same price and Amazon just gives me a small commission. You'll need watercolor paper. I use Canson XL, it's very inexpensive. You will need a black technical pen for this. I use Faber-Castell pit pens, this time the small size for the wings. I also use acrylic white paint pens on top of the watercolor just to give highlights. And I don't have a particular one that I love yet. I'm still in the works of like trying different ones out. For this project, you'll need the basics, glass of water, a mixing palette, a pencil, a paper towel, and an eraser. And for the watercolor paints for this particular project, I used my White Knight watercolor set. I used the black, the yellow Hansa, and the golden deep. But you can do whatever colors you want. You can dress this bee up like a typical color, or you can do it fantasy and do different colors. It's all by what you have on hand. Okay, that's it on watercolor supplies, so let's get started on adding some color. Please get all your supplies together and your paints out on your palette. If you need to pause, pause. If you need to speed things up, speed things up. This is gonna be done on your time, so just uh, go with the flow, pause, stop, do it as you need. First up, trace this bumblebee onto your watercolor paper. I've got a downloadable bumblebee at TammyAnnCreative.com. That's T-A-M-M-I-E-N-A-N-N -N -N, Creative.com. Just lightly trace it. You can use a light box if you have one or a window. Please pause, make sure you've got your bumblebee ready. Okay, I'm gonna start here with the color. If you need to pause, do that. Get lots of black ready because this bumblebee is fairly dark. And I've got this little uh, dish here because I knew I was gonna need a lot. I'm just uh, adding some water. I don't want it to be too diluted because I want the bumblebee to be very dark. Here's a step-by-step -step sheet. You can get this on my website as well, TammyAnnCreative.com. I've done my bumblebee just a little bit darker than you should you have yours, and I'm going to erase it. I just wanted you to be able to see the bumblebee on my sheet before I start. I'm gonna use my black technical pen to detail the wings. I'm using the small size technical pen. I just want this to look dainty and really thin lines because bees wings sort of like they're transparent and you're gonna do a very transparent black on top of here so you'll get that effect of transparent wings. So I'm just doing those lines that are in the wings but not actually outlining the wing itself. Just take your time, make sure these look nice and pretty. This really gives the bee's wings shape and like they're actually moving and fluttering. This is one of my favorite parts of this painting.
Okay, so let's dip into that dark black watercolor. And we're gonna start doing these larger areas of the bumblebee. Just take it slow. Make sure you have some nice crisp lines. That's why we have these very sharp uh, water brushes. I believe I'm using my Arteza, Arteza, I'm not sure actually how to pronounce it, water brush. I'll have links for those down in the description. I actually have a little Amazon store so you can actually go down and purchase all the different items from the bee shopping list. And in the coming weeks, I'm also gonna be having some other like cute critter, like garden critter watercolors, including a dragonfly, butterfly, and a snail. Last week, I actually did a very cute caterpillar. If you're interested in coloring pages, I'm also doing a full garden set. I have got a fountain lake scene with lots of cute critters as well as a garden gate that's in this really cool brick wall. You'll get birds and chickmunks and lots of cute critters. I even included a baby dragon. So if you're interested in those coloring pages, just go to my website, those are free. There's a free coloring page link. I'm just finishing up on the first part here. I've gotten it really dark and black. I want the contrast between the black parts of the bee and the yellow orange areas to be very distinct. I hope I'm not going too slow or too fast for you, but if I am, feel free to pause. I'm really great with that. I'm just gonna turn up the music here and let you do all those larger dark black areas. And then we're gonna actually move on to the wings. For the wings, we're actually gonna dilute down some of that black color until it's really translucent and just very beautiful.
Okay, I'm just about done here. I'm going to move on to those wings. I'm gonna take some of that black down onto my palette and I'm gonna add lots of water. And I'm actually gonna get out a testing strip of watercolor paper because I don't wanna hit those wings with too dark of a black. So I'm testing out here on my paper and it's too dark. So I'm gonna add more water. I want this to be very transparent. And depending on your black, your transparency could be different. So just get down into where it's really very light grayish black. There's mine. That's looking good. So I'm gonna start here on the wing. Making sure those lines are nice and crisp. You want this to be wet, but not too wet. Just enough to get that color moving. Add a little bit more in here if you need to. And get some definition in those wings. You don't want them to all be just the same color. So add a little bit more, take some of that paint, add some water in different areas. So you'll get a, a variety of textures in there and different colors. You'll, uh, you'll be able to get those different 3D textures in there with the amounts of color you use. Once you're done with this wing, move on to the next. I'm liking mine here. It's looking great. I'm getting in the shape, trying not to touch any of the other areas. This is a very contemporary looking bumblebee.
Okay, I'm going to start in on the yellow area of the bumblebee. I've changed out my brush. If you only have one brush, make sure to clean it out really well. Get rid of that black. We don't want it to get into the yellow and change the color. So I'm adding the yellow in here to the bumblebee. I don't want a huge amount of water, but I do want it to be nice and glossy. Once I get this section done, I'm actually going to add in some of that orangey color. And we're going to get it to be very pretty. It's going to create a very cool effect. That watercolor effect where you have two colors merging, but not fully mixed. When you use these two different colors together, you're going to have your highlights and your shadows. And it gives the bumblebee more of that 3D feel, like it's coming off the page. The round shape of the bumblebee also helps with that, that view of that it's actually more than just flat. I got a little piece on my brush here. It's either a katana cat hair or one of the brush pieces is coming out. Every once in a while you'll get one of those. I love my cat Katana, but her hair surely gets into the art supplies. She leaves her mark. She also gets really feisty. She likes getting over my hand and like butting up against anything that I have in my hand. So the paintbrush or any like pencil, that's just something to rub up for her. I oftentimes have to put her outside the room so I can actually get some work done. But she's super cute, a little black kitty with little white tufts. She might make it into one or two videos here. We got her a few years ago now, two, three years ago. Someone on next door was looking to rehome her and we were so happy to get Katana and move her into our new house. Okay, so we're just finishing up with the yellow here and we're adding some orange. We're going to dip our pen into the orange and then just do little drops and give some uh, definition to this bee, adding in that orange. And because my orange is so transparent, you can really see the yellow through and they blend. Depending on your watercolor, you might get a little bit of a different outcome. But watercolor is just so pretty and you do it as you, you want. No two paintings are the same. Oh, I had a little bit of a... A little bit of a uh, color there get into the white area so I actually just used a little bit of that paper towel and sopped it up and then I'm going in again you will want to be careful about going in again depending on how much water you have because it can go right back into that section you just sort of have to eye it 
That's a little tip there for if you get outside the lines on watercolor or you get a splotch, you can sometimes add some water and sop it up. It all depends on the color though. The lighter colors are easier. So I'm adding in some more of that orange but into the middle section. I want this bumblebee to be your own, so use as much color as you like, change it up. And when we do the accents, you can put the accents where you want them. Okay, I'm going to move on to doing the legs, the antenna, and those little extra areas here on the bumblebee. There's the antenna and the legs. There's two lower and one set of upper legs. And I'm dipping into that deep dark black. Taking it really easy with that sharp brush because these are so small and they have these little curves. Go at your own pace.
Okay, I'm going to use my white acrylic paint pen to create some highlights on this bumblebee. So I've got my paper out because you have to shake the pen and then uh, push on the nib to get the paint flowing. Some of these pens are better than others. This particular one I actually got as a gift. It was a, in a big pack of lots of different colors and I've actually really liked these. I think they're called Airship. But I've looked and you can't get just single pens. You have to buy the whole set. So normally I recommend that you get like the Posca, Pos, po, Posca pens instead because you can buy singles. But if you're looking to invest in a larger set, these uh, this one's a good one, Airship. I've actually got a huge amount of colors. And I got both these smaller ones as well as a larger nib set from my friend. In the set there was also some metallics and I really love the silver one and then the gold one. So I'm really having to push and get that paint flowing. Sometimes it works better than other days. So I am getting uh, some other different pens, white opaque pens and giving them a try. Once I'm really sure of which pen I like, I'll let everyone know. But I haven't found the, the best pen I believe yet. I have tried using like opaque paints and that type thing and you can use that, but I really like to do, um, to use the pens. The pen just really gives that sharper, distinct uh, location where you can really get into smaller areas. You can do dots. It's just getting the paint flowing can be the hard part, <laughs> but it's worth it. I think that's good. I'm gonna move on to defining those wings just one more time. Now that we've put the black paint on top, the lines that were originally there aren't as distinct. So I'm gonna go over those. I think it's best to do them at the front though because then you can see them. They aren't hidden underneath the paint and it gives you some outlines. This is looking great, I like it. So we're just about done here. If you're not at this section yet, just pause the video or rewind. Do this on your own time, come back if you need to, redo it. I do these things many times. Sometimes I'll do it two, three times to make sure. And that's how I come up with my template. Please do give this video a thumbs up, a like, and comment. I do wanna know about what you want to be painting here on this channel. If you wanna get notified of additional tutorials as I upload them, click the notification bell. I do really want to meet you all, so do comment. If you've got channels, I'd love to come and see them. I hope this has been fun, a little bit of whimsy. That's me, fun and whimsical. Okay, make sure you sign your piece of art. This is yours. If you're good at writing, your penmanship is good, 
Also think about maybe adding a name. Maybe this is a nursery piece. You can do it for a baby's room. Maybe do it for a birthday, it could be a card. You can email me at TammyAnnCreative at gmail.com if you would like to share your piece of artwork with me. Some of those I'll be putting up on Instagram.com. I'm just going to finish my tea up here and I'll see you again soon.